although the earth is blue, it's quite rare to find animals that are blue on earth. So today we're going to be looking at the top 10 blue animals found in nature, which have always held a deep fascination for everyone who saw them. Number one is Glaucus Atlanticus. Glaucus Atlanticus is also called the sea swallow, the blue angel or the blue dragon. And it's a type of blue sea slug and it's a pelagic and that means that it floats upside down using the surface tension of the water to stay afloat and it's also just carried along by the winds and ocean currents and it's camouflaged the blue on the top is so that it camouflages using the blue of the water so that it protects itself from above and it's also gray or silvery underneath so that you can't really see it from beneath because it's camouflaged against the silvery reflective surface of the sea and it feeds on other pelagic creatures, including the Portuguese man of war, and it stores little stinging cysts in it that uses them as a defense against predators. And if a person touches them, they can get a very, very painful or even a potentially dangerous sting. So stay clear of them, boys and girls. Number two is the blue poison dart frog. The blue poison dart frog or it's also called the blue poison arrow frog, lives in uh, an island called Suriname, which is near uh, northern Brazil. It also lives in northern Brazil. And it goes by the name of Oco Pipi there. And the blue skin on it is supposed to serve as a warning to predators. It lives in the forests and it kind of hops around during the day, but it's known for being very, very aggressive and it calls out towards potential predators and it wrestles with each other as well. And sometimes uh, tribesmen there, they use the poison on it in order to make little poisonous arrows with and they fire them at animals that they're trying to catch. Definitely don't go eating one because you won't come off very well. And they like to eat ants and beetles and flies and caterpillars. Let me know if you've seen one in the wild. Number three is the ribbon eel. The ribbon eel is an elegant creature and it looks like a big mythical Chinese dragon because it's got a long thin body and big high dorsal fins and you can recognise them straight away because of their big expanded anterior nostrils. And they start off as babies and then young adults, all black, but then they either change to blue if they're male and yellow if they're female. But these are, quite amazingly, what are called protandric hermaphrodites. That means that they're first male and then they change into females and we're not totally sure if they do that colour change when they go through from male to female but many of them, uh, most of them, do actually change from male to females. They go through a sex change as well as a colour change. They must have an identity crisis. Unfortunately though you can't really keep them in captivity because it's really hard to keep them living for more than a month, which is strange. Um, the males are pretty huge actually, they're a metre or 37 inches in length up to and the yellow larger females can go up to a whopping 130 centimetres. So you better stay away from them because they look pretty crazy. What a gorgeous, stunning blue creature those are. Number four is the blue whale. The blue whale is actually the biggest animal ever recorded. It's up to 30 meters, 30 meters in length, and it can be up to a maximum recorded weight of 173 tons, which is incredible. They used to be everywhere all over the world, but then of course, at the start of the 20th century, everyone started hunting them and they were nearly all hunted to extinction, and they're in very low numbers comparatively now. They eat krill, which is a little type of crustacean and they get through absolutely tons of them. They get through about 40 million krill a day, which is tons and tons and tons. And they're known to vocalize. They do kind of very high pitched ultrasonic calls to each other, probably to tell each other to stay away from each other. And they tend to feed during the day uh, deeper down and then they come up to the surface to feed at night and they migrate over long distances and then they go down to the equator once a year in order to mate and the males can fight each other off for that. And they travel very fast actually, normally about 20 kilometers or 12 miles an hour. 
but especially if they're heading towards a female they can get up to 31 miles an hour over short bursts which is pretty incredible number five is the blue lobster actually the blue lobster is a type of crayfish it's called the blue crayfish and it's a species of freshwater crayfish endemic to florida in the united states and there are tons of them everywhere its natural range is actually the area of what's called st john's river in florida and it lives in the florida keys as well and it's actually on the red list as a species of least concern because there are so many of them the blue crayfish or blue lobster is frequently kept in freshwater aquaria but in the wild this species varies in color actually from brown tan to blue which you can see in the pictures here but the aquarium strain has been selectively bred to be a brilliant blue cobalt color number six is the blue damselfly this small brightly colored damselfly is probably the most common of dragonflies and damselflies throughout much of britain it inhabits a wide range of habits habitats from small ponds to rivers and they're especially common at lakes and reservoirs once the damselflies are in tandem and perched the female can swing her abdomen to initiate pairing but this damselfly requires a close look for a beginner to distinguish them from an azure damselfly Typically they fly low through the reeds and often fly well over the water, unlike azure damselflies. They're also a slightly brighter shade of blue. Number 7 is the blue tiger. The Maltese tiger or blue tiger is a reported but unproven coloration morph of a tiger, reportedly mostly in the Fujian province of China. It is said to have bluish fur with dark grey stripes. Most of these Maltese or blue tigers reported have been in the South Chinese subspecies. The South Chinese tiger today is critically endangered due to their illegal and continued use in traditional Chinese medicine and the blue type may be wholly extinct. Blue tigers have also been reported in Korea and they call it the Maltese tiger and that comes from the domestic cat terminology for blue fur and refers to the slate grey coloration. Many cats with such coloration are present in Malta and that might have given rise to that name. But in 1910, a guy who was a missionary called Harry Caldwell, and he was also a big game hunter, he claimed to have spotted and hunted a blue tiger outside Foot Zoo. And he wrote about it in his book and said, the markings of the beast are strikingly beautiful. The ground color is a delicate shade of Maltese changing into light grey blue on the underpants. The stripes are well defined and like those of the ordinary yellow tiger. Number eight is the blue jay. The blue jay is actually a passerine type of bird and it's native to North America. It normally lives in the eastern and central USA, sometimes in the west coast and sometimes you even find them in Canada. Um, it feeds mainly on nuts and seeds like acorns and soft fruits and it measures about 22 to 30 centimeters or 12 inches long and strangely it's not really blue it looks blue but the color of the wings and the feathers are it's not actually blue that just comes from the way in which the light interferes with the internal structure of the feathers so if you find a feather or you pull one off and you crush it, then it doesn't look blue at all because you've destroyed the structure. But I'm sure you'll agree they're absolutely stunning birds and they are very, very beautiful. Let me know in the comments if you've seen one in the wild. Number nine is the peacock. The peacock is actually a subtype of two different types of peafowl and it's this one is the Indian peafowl and it's got an iridescent blue and green plumage as we all know with those beautiful big tail feathers they're actually not feathers at the back they're what are called tail coverts and just like the last one we saw the blue is not from a pigment even though it looks that way it's actually just from the way the light interacts on the kind of nano structure of the feathers and some of them are closer together and others are further apart and that's what creates sometimes this iridescent greeny blue tinge and they actually they go around on the ground 
and but they fly up and live up in a tree during the night where it's safer and they eat loads of things they're actually omnivores they eat like little plants and acorns and stuff like that believe they even eat reptiles and small mammals as well and there's a lot of discussion about why the male has these big crazy tail feathers because it's actually a hindrance to it so initially they thought it was as a display to the female but it's now accepted that it's a very unusual type of honest display because kind of the, the female would select it because it's so hard for it to survive against predators with that big tail that it must be really strong otherwise but it's a gorgeous shade of blue isn't it absolutely stunning Number 10 is the little blue heron. The little blue heron lives mostly in the Gulf states in America and also down to Central America and the Caribbean and even Peru. Um, it's got a lovely blue plumage and dark blue legs and it's about 60 centimeters long with a big 102 centimeters or 40 inch wingspan and it weighs in about 300 grams. Um, the young birds, strangely, are all white except for the dark wingtips and they do something funny when they're feeding the little blue herons when they're young especially they mingle with snowy egrets which are white and the snowy egret tolerates their presence more than little blue herons in adult humage the young birds actually catch more fish when in the presence of the snowy egret and also gain some protection from predators when they mix into flocks of them rather than the big blue ones where they would stand out and it's possible that because of these advantages, they remain white for their first year. Gorgeous birds. Well, thanks for watching this top 10 blue animals of our lovely world. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it and sharing with you some very interesting facts about these very varied creatures. So please remember to like this video if you did. Comment below, let me know what your favorite was or what kind of video you'd like to see in the future. I love doing top 10s. And remember to subscribe so you'll always be notified about what great videos are upcoming next. Thanks very much for joining me. See you later, bye bye.